Hey, thanks for tuning into this week's episode. Would you make sure to please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel here? And please share this episode with somebody whose life it will make better. What's up, Hegan? What's up, my big How are you, my man? Good to see you. It's a pleasure. Congratulations. The studio looks amazing. Thanks for flying out. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. I love Colorado. Colorado is special. So we got a big, big jiu-jitsu seminar this weekend? Yes, I'm excited to teach the kids. The kids... It's so so cute to teach them. It's a uh, it's a good way to warm up before I teach the adults. <laughs> so you got a hug from one of our smallest. Yeah, newest how old students. he's five. He's five. He came and gave me a big hug. What a sweet kid. Yeah, man. he's he's twenty eight pounds. So he's oh. tiny, 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 <laughs> tiny tiger. And he goes, oh, "When's he getting coming? When's he getting coming?" What a cute kid, man. Now you started about that age, right? You were. I start five. yeah I start around I start around five play for my cousins but I real start training very serious after 13 14 that's when the um, was a full time job for me it was like now is business now sleep on the mat train three times a day compete every weekend and try get better try get have fun doing and um, I love it. Uh, I think it was one of the best times in my life when they live in Rio with my cousins on the mat, the simple life, and just training, have fun. And, and you're out there on the on the Gracie farm? Yeah, no, uh, the, the, it's funny because uh, my mother's sister, uh, named Laia, married Carlos Grace, the founder of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He... Um, Little by little, I end up moving to live with my aunt, like with Carlos Grace and my cousins. We start push me to get involved in jiu-jitsu. They like my style. They like the way I fight. And it was good. I start get super excited to to little by little get. I fall in love with the sport, and I'm happy because. I little by little start push my brothers to do the same, and all my brothers end up getting the black belt, competing, and, and got the bug. You know what I mean? That was uh, was an amazing time to not just me to learn from my cousins, but my brothers too. And you spent many years competing. You went three hundred, three hundred and sixty. Yeah, I have a so. I have a luck a luck time. I used to compete in small, big, and medium events. And I, f- I believe I trained so much. I was so prepared. I was lucky to have uh, 365 fights, uh, almost eight years to nine years, no loss. And um, was kind of interest to, to see that. Because for me, the competition was amazing, but I think the best is... For the most important for me was the training. I spent so much time sparring, like doing like between 35, 40 sparring every day. Yeah, I think that's what get got my mind and my body to be sharp for the competitions to have a good record. And it's no secret. It's just fall in love with what you do and put the time. Do you remember your first tournament? When you went out there, did you I have remember, those I remember those one fight, one of the fights I remember, Hoyce Grace was on my corner. It was a yellow belt. And come this guy's almost like seven feet, uh, this young, this kid. He was like, oh, shit. He, he told me a little bit what to do. Yeah, I did. And I submitted the, the big kid quick because he was so slow. He was super big, but so slow. And that kind of, after that, gave me motivation to go to the next fight and gave me the confidence. Yeah. When you get the confidence, every victory is more confidence. Every battle is more, it's, it's, you get better and better and better. Mentally, uh, I was in a level super high. Yeah, I was ready to fight anyone at the time. And it was, and it was all day, every day. Tournament it was for me. I never think about. I have so much fun doing. I, I hang out with my best friends. My cousin Helion Grace was one of my 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 good friends growing up. 
é Renzo e os, o Renato. It was a group like Royce, Royler, Hoker, Carlos, my brother, uh, Jean-Jacques and John was younger at the time, Roger, Renato. You have the friends, né? a bunch of friends, like who hang out, all Jiu-Jitsu guys. And it was amazing. I have so much fun growing up with these guys. It's like discover this beautiful city, Rio, which you are so interested. You always get in trouble. <laughs> you gotta have <laughs> growing stories, up, you gotta have stories like, with these guys. We have some amazing stories for sure. But that uh, was an amazing way to grow up and in learning how to be wise and moments we have growing up was fantastic. What yeah. what's your most memorable story and who is it with? So out of your cousins and your brothers and, uh, and why I have a lot of moments with my cousin Helion. Helion was uh, I mean he is like Batman Robin. We always go out together. We know each other so well. We protect each other back and and Helion I uh, is a kind uh, person like I can be fight the devil. He be right there next to me to to protect my back. You know what I mean? These are kind of friendships hard to find. Somebody who who go to hell with you yeah. and to protect you. Helium is this type of guy. That's why I believe a lot of the new generation love Helium to be on the corner. Because he brings this kind of the confidence for the fighters. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. he's over there on the corner. People feel comfortable to have a guy like Helium on the corner. Yeah. It's the same. I believe like uh, I have a big fight today in a competition. I would love to have Helium, Helium in my corner to to be my corner man to tell me the right time to do this, the right time to do that. It's very important to have a good corner man. I always have some really good guys on my corner like Hoss Gracie, Carlos Gracie Jr. was a very good on my corner. Um, Crawling Grace it was fantastic. Uh, my brother Carlos was good. Uh, it was very interesting. Growing up, I have some amazing people around to help you in competition. I was very lucky. And you and you went eight years, real real heavy competing. No, I compete all my life. I have poor, hundreds of fights after that. I lost like probably 10 times, 15 times, I don't know. But I have a good record of victories. Um, I lost for my cousin Hickson when I was uh, younger. And that fight was fantastic. The way we fought each other, like even like you, a cousin. When do we step on the ring to fight against each other? We forgot we're not cousins anymore. No more. Let's go to war. In this kind of fights, is that kind of fights you don't forget because. Uh, The most important thing for me, you step on the ring, you're going to fight, give your best. Doesn't matter who is on the other side, just have, go over there and do your best. Because even in case you lose, at least you lost, you know what I mean, the right way. Not yeah. like you regrets on the future. Like, oh, I didn't do this. No, you lost because you lost. You did your best. Move on. Let's go to the next one. And, and you love teaching the kids. So you, you love like, teaching everybody. I like ki kids, pure, and nice, it's pure soul. And kids bring this happiness, this, this, when you see a young kid going to a grappling, you see they grapple, it's very pure. It's very interesting to see these kids come, the, these lions, and how the sport little by little transform them to come these athletes. You know what I mean? It's amazing. I remember I was talking to a... I remember Roger, Roger Grace, when he started training jiu-jitsu. I remember he's young, like like this very sweet kid growing up. Um, and today, to see he come 10 times world champion, and he's 6'5", this amazing athlete. It's kind, it's kind of super cool to see this transition from the... As a kid to come these super athletes for me to to have a chance to teach kids I start to imagine who is this kids going to be the next super success champion you know what I mean and that's why I love teach kids because it's very pure very raw and it's amazing I love to teach everybody but kids for me 
is super cool. Yeah, and you do, and you and you light up. You had a little yeah. little guy come give you a hug, oh, and uh, who knows who knows where he's going. It's a pure love. Yeah. They treat you like you the uh, uh, his second father. Is amazing. I look them like my kids. When they teach a kid, I get very personal to protect them to sh- not just teach them to be a jujitsu guy, but to come a better person to be sure they they do the right things. You know what I mean? To be positive as a a, a good mentor for them, for grow up with integrity. Uh, uh, that's what jiu-jitsu is about, you know, to not just teach techniques, but teach people to become better people. You know? So now, so you've got an academy, Beverly Hills. You're teaching lots of people in Hollywood. You've got your network. You're on the movie set, the movie scene. Yeah. You got a lot. You got a lot going on. No, I grew up loving movies. Now I think this come from my father, Carlos. He always. Uh, I bring love to bring us to watch movies, Clean Easter, Paul Newman, uh, Charles Bronson. And I remember my father was, is a good relationship I have for him to watch movies with him. And because my father like, end up like a lot. He little by little, when they opened school in Beverly Hills, he little by little have a chance to teach some, these actors who grew up, and watch them like uh, Jean Claude Van Damme, Steve Seagal, uh, Stallone, uh, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You have opportunity to to meet them as a in person. It's fantastic, fantastic. And for me, it was amazing it was a way to to have these guys you adore in future in the future. These guys can personal friends. You get to know them as a human beings. That is very unique, very cool for me. Because I remember when they watch Enter the Dragon uh, with Bruce Lee, I watched a hundred times with my brother Roger. After this, Chuck Norris, who I watch all his movies. He, today, Chuck Norris is one of my personal friends. Jean Claude Van Damme is a good friend. Steve Seagal is a good friend and get to know Slide in person, get to know Arnold Schwarzenegger is um, super cool. Like uh, another day I was teaching in Beverly Hills, it was super cool. He's, one of his kids come to train, uh, Joshua. And for me, man, you look like your father so much. It was so cool to, you know what I mean? How life is fun. You used to adore uh, the father in the future. Yeah. It's unpredicted to see his kids come to training for you is, is, is so cool, man. I, I have, I love the industry in Hollywood. That's, uh, I do for the love. And to have a chance to get people to come and train for me and have a chance to do a, a small uh, a divisor for some of these guys for the film is it's, it's a passion. I love it. So when you were growing up, watching the movies, idolizing these superstars. Who was the first one that you met? I know Chuck, Chuck Norris, Norris was was big in helping you guys come over here and help Chuck with Norris. introducing Chuck Norris Jiu-Jitsu. was not, was a, for me was, Chuck Norris is a hero for me. He, for me to meet, have a chance to get to know him as a person, personal friend was a dream come true. And, and how did that come about? Like we, we know the story that he had, reached out or connected, but who reached out? How did you guys end up meeting him? What did that initial meet up well, look I will like? have a friend from Australia, uh, Richard North, and another one, uh, John Will, used to own a magazine in Australia called Blitz, and they little by little create that connection. He, Richard North was super good, close to Chuck Norris, and uh, Richard North and John Will friends, and little by little, they, boy, we have Higgins Machado, go train with them. And Chuck Norris came and we come friends. And little by little, he starts to talk, try, because I want to go back to Brazil. Uh, my life was in Brazil. It was Chuck Norris who, who kind of pulled me on the side and said, man, you stay, I, I open a school for you. I help you. And he helped me. He got his lawyer to help him to get my papers, Helped to bring a couple of my brothers, Carlos and John. And after this, come uh, Roger and Jean Jacques to, 
to United States, and that's how little by little the Machado start create the Machado brothers. No? Um, uh, was was a good time. Chuck Norris was um, the first one who who changed base uh, the Machado's life. And then you guys, so you guys are over here. You're introducing jujitsu to the United States. Talk about those those early days when you were just um, getting here. And it was before the UFC. It was very unique time. Um, I remember uh, Horion, Hoyce, Hickson. We worked in the garage teaching privates, and um, little by little, Horion start talking about let's get out of the garage. Let's open the first. Grace Jiu Jitsu School. Yeah. Why not to to do something bigger like what we did in Brazil to do like a fight, everything go to prove Jiu Jitsu is uh, efficient martial arts. Was I believe Horin was the the brain for change the game. Um, I think he, he was the guy who I have who come out the idea to start the UFC, open the first school, and little by little for the grow after that, uh, a lot of people start come. The speed changed. The speed was slow. Uh, little by little, people come to us and stuff. But after the success of Royce winning the first UFC, something magical happened. Everybody want to train jiu-jitsu. Everybody. It sounded like he was a uh, unique because after a while I started travel all over the world. I traveled to a hundred countries, over eight hundred seminars, and changed my life. It's like uh, today I live in the place I, I love. I love the I live in Beverly Hills. Uh, I have so many amazing friends. Uh, I love the lifestyle I have. Um, it's amazing. Uh, I'm very thankful for Chuck Norris changed my mind to stay in the United States. Because we have, me and my brother have thousands of students. We have a chance to manufacture so many black belts today. We have these hundreds and hundreds of black belts teaching all over, not just the United States, but all over the world. We have the first black belt in England, the first black belt in Mexico, the was black belt in some Australia and Korea, and it's kind of super cool to see the progress of how Jiu Jitsu is so big today. It's a, it's a different time. People today see Jiu Jitsu, but they didn't understand how much work we did to get today. Like, I think the Machados, the first generation of the Machados and the Grace who was here is the true pioneers of the sport in the United States around the world too. So when you guys were coming over, did you did you, did you imagine jiu-jitsu would be as big as it is today? Did Hoyce expect going into that first UFC? No. Or was he who was just ready to fight? No. They go, go fight. I think he, uh, Hoyce is like a phenomenal soldier. You come to Hoyce, say, Hoyce, let's jump this bridge. Hoyce, go. He's uh, uh, that guy committing a thousand percent. And Hoyle um, was uh, they say, Hoyce, you're going to fight. Because we're going to prove to the world that skinny guy can, can beat these guys twice his size. And, that's what's going to give the value for jiu-jitsu, to get somebody who look not the part and come and deliver. Royce did. Royce did. That's why Royce is in the Hall of Fame. Of AFC, he did three FC, won three FCs. He fought the toughest guys. Uh, a lot of respect for Royce. Royce um, did a, a phenomenal job to... He's one of the, the the pioneers of the sport for sure. When when you guys were coming over here in the early days, like there's obviously difficulty and challenge and struggle. Did did you ever think that it, that you were going to stop, give up, turn back, go back to Brazil, or were you guys pretty committed once you got here that you were going to just keep bringing jujitsu 
to the United States and just keep pushing it, keep sharing it. Keep Growing showing up it. in Rio is rough. We used to be in the war zone. To come to the United States, just change the ambient. You know what I mean? It's, it's, this, it's what we ready for. It yeah. was good. It was a, it's a good time. Everybody's super young. Everybody's super good shape. And it was very interesting phase for Jiu-Jitsu to grow in America. Hey, just want to give a big shout out to one of our sponsors, Imprint Digital. If you're a small business owner, one of the things that you need to navigate to be successful is all things online and digital in terms of marketing and your messaging. Imprint Digital, they are the real deal. They are the professionals and they know this world inside and out. Make sure to visit their website at imprint-digital.com. If you're a Christian small business owner and you live in Northern Colorado, you have to check out one of our sponsors, The Foundry Advisory. The Foundry is a Christian executive peer advising group that connects other business owners in the community to help you focus on your faith, your life, your leadership, and your business. Make sure to check them out at thefoundryadvisory.com. Hey, just wanted to give a big shout out and thank you to one of our sponsors, Lit Lighting Solutions. Lit Lighting Solutions provides permanent decorative lighting for residential homes and commercial buildings in Northern Colorado and up and down the Front Range. Quick note, these guys have done work on our family's personal home and it is so cool to come home to permanent lighting that you can change day by day, season by season. To check them out, go to jellylighting.com. So when did you settle into the Be Beverly Hills? So you come over, you're no, teaching. I, was, I have this school in Redondo Beach. And I want to change. I said, man, I have 600 students here. But um, I want to change a little bit. I want to see what I can do outside Jiu-Jitsu too. And um, when I opened school in Beverly Hills, I was worried about because it's not a place for jiu-jitsu school. Over there, no way you have quantity. Because the real estate over there is super expensive. Don't have, very difficult to find parking, space for cars. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. Um, but you, you have some good clients. And I realize my focus is the good clients. Um, and based that, so little by little, change my vision to work in Hollywood actors and producers, directors. That was uh, something who I have a passion before, and I just put wood on the fire. And um, yeah, I love it. I have so much fun. It's like sometimes look like I'm not working because I teach. Some of your amazing people, I learned so much from these amazing students I have. And I feel very privileged to hang out with these successful actors and these people I admire from the movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's awesome. Well, and people see whatever character they're playing in the movies, but talk, talk about some of your... I mean, I know you love everybody that you're working with, but you've got some really good friends that you've made with celebrities I have some celebrities cool in people. I, yeah, I have one of the coolest guy uh, is I have experience to teach is Mel Gibson. He's a, the real do guy, the real tough guy, the real... is a guy who born in a different area. He will... Probably he'd be an MMA fighter for sure. Yeah. Because he have what's take to he have the rage, like you know what I mean? You know what I mean? The other guy I love I was amazed opportunity for me to meet was Clean Eastern. Because my father loved him. And I have opportunity to go to a premiere for one of his movies and have some jujitsu on the movie. He, um he was, he was talking about how you like because he knew uh, uh, I, I, I was a jiu-jitsu teacher and he asked me the question. I said, no, it's really good. And I was talking about poor my father. He want to meet my father, <laughs> but my father passed away a long time. And he said, oh, I feel sorry, but 
uh, but that that was a, a really amazing guy. guy. Today I have really good friends. One's Frank Grillo. Frank Grillo is a brother. Charlie Hanna is another really good friend who did Sons of Anarchy. Um, a Toby Cabell, who's another actor from England, is an amazing guy. I really have a lot of respect for him. Joel Kidman uh, is another guy who's super tough in jiu-jitsu. He's a guy... I believe pretty soon start competing in jiu-jitsu. He is very talented. I have a lot of respect for Mario Lopez. I think Mario Lopez is uh, not only is uh, he work like an animal, but he train like an animal. He trains jiu-jitsu. He train he, he do boxing. He's uh, I like Mario Lopez. But the number one guy who I really impressed me was Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy, I have opportunity to come to the school training. But he's a guy very unique because he's one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. And he go to a jiu-jitsu competition, don't care. Go over there as a blue belt, compete, want to have fun. And I, I get a lot of respect for people like that who kind of impress me. Man, you, you don't need to do that. Yep. You're already so successful. You're one of the biggest stars in the world. Why are you going to put yourself in this position to fight the jiu-jitsu championship? And he go over there and he do it. He win the championship and he love it. And he fall in love with this competition, this training. He, for me, is a, I have a lot of respect for, for Tom Hardy for doing that. Because it's not, it's not easy to do that. You know what I mean? Another guy who impressed me a lot was uh, Batista, who did uh, uh, Gunner of the Gallas. He, I was watching a video. I know he's a purple belt under my cousin Cesar Gracie, but he did uh, an MMA fight. Uh, yeah. He did uh, uh, an MMA fight. He beat the guy. That's very impressive because... You don't need, it's not about the money. You have the money. Yep. It's about the experience, about the feeling. You know what I mean? To step on the ring, you fight somebody. I have a lot of respect for Batista too. It's like, uh, a, lot, a lot of people in Hollywood are super cool, but um, it's kind of nice to see some of these guys cross over for jiu-jitsu competition, for MMA competition. It's kind of it's kind of it's kind of cool to see that. You were at the um, Conor McGregor Khabib fight, weren't you? Yeah, with, I was with Mel there. Gibson. I was with Mel Gibson, <laughs> his girlfriend, and my cousin says Alina was there, and they jump over there, and the security brought us to the wrong place. It was a, a rough day for everybody, <laughs> but uh, Mel Gibson is a type of guy. He he didn't want to go home. He wanted to stay over there and throw some punch in case somebody come close to him. Mel Gibson is a tough guy, man. I have Mel Gibson, a guy uh, I get in a bar fight. I like to have a, a guy like Mel Gibson next to me. So he's he's a real he's the real lethal weapon. <laughs> he's, he, yep. he's a, he remind me a guys like uh, uh, Helio Gracie personality. He remind like. Carson Gracie, he have the, the unique toughness. He, um, he can be a phenomenal boxer. He can be a phenomenal jiu-jitsu guy. Uh, he have a lot of injuries now. That's the, the issue we have Some, when we're training. Shoulders, hip, and stuff like that. But he is an amazing guy. A lot of respect for Mel. So, so the injuries, I've got, I've got a number of them. I haven't been training nearly as long as you guys, but how, how's your body after, after all that? My body's good. They're going to do a steam cell soon. I uh, want to go. I, the same guy who did Mel, uh, Mel Gibson is the uh, doctor. They have a clinic in Texas. I think about, we've been talking about, I want to go there when I have a break. Yeah, I want to do my shoulder. My shoulder have, it's not a problem, but stiffness. I have a, I lost a little bit of flexibility on my shoulders. Yeah, 
in case sometimes I train too hard or lift weights too hard, the next day my shoulder is kind of stiff. Uh, that's why I have to be careful, don't do too heavy. You know what I mean? Yeah, too many injuries, too many little scar tissue, too much. I think maybe a surgery to clean it up or stem cell. I, I want to do stem cell. So with the with the amount of traveling that you do now, so you're in jujitsu in Hollywood, working on movie sets. Tell tell us about the Hegan that people may not know about. So what's something somebody doesn't know about you? How do you like to unplug, unwind when you're not in jujitsu Hollywood with the stars? Uh, I like it. To invest in friendship. Uh, I believe friendship is like a book. You meet the person. You want to write the book together with the person. And when you get a, a chance to to have some friends, you you have a life, almost a life together, the person you have almost like a book. That's the best feeling in the world. That's the kind of friends I like to have. Guys, I have a friend in Australia who is, uh, I have a lot of love and respect. It's John Will. We know each other for 28, almost 30 years. Uh, he helped me so much. I helped him so much. Every year for almost, I've been in Australia almost over 26 times. Uh, I always go over there every year because I'm, he's a really good friend. The other friend I have, Eric Paulson, who is one of my really good friends. I we have a history for 20 years of friendship. I have a guy who grew up, we went to high school together named Marcos Santos, who have a school with my brother Carlos in Texas. He's another good friend. Helium Grace is one of my best friends too. And my brothers, now I have a phenomenal friendship, Carlos, John, Roger, you know what I mean? These guys for me is my life. I love them. Each one more than the other is... So, what a pleasure to have them as his friend. Now, when do all the Machados get to get together? Do you guys? I know you're doing the camp coming up here soon. Yes. Is that the only time you guys see each other? Or do it's you kind also? It's kind of hard together? to get together. All five together. I get together. Little. I see them all the time. I see Carlos and they go to Dallas, but it's very difficult to get them together because life. When you have kids, you work. And have a lot of things create a distance. It's kind of nice to have the jiu-jitsu to connect us. In this camp is not just a pleasure to teach. It's a pleasure to hang out with my brothers, too, because it's your best friend. So you grow up together, have a, a history with these guys. And these guys is, uh, is amazed to see all them together. Yeah, Love it. So what's next for you? Like what what's coming up? What are you excited about? Uh, moving I'm forward? excited to. I I try open the future. I want to open not academy anymore. My next big challenge, I want to open like a big center, a big health club. Um, like big, like uh, to have everything from fitness to MMA, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu section for competition, section for everybody, for kids. Uh, this, I want, I've been developed this idea for a while, but when this, the business and the structure get ready, I'm going to try open the first one. Uh, I'm going to figure out a place to open the first one. And the first one do well. I try franchise the these big centers. Not just the academy, but... I want to open something for for the future, for change the game. And that's one of the passions I try to focus. And I try to direct a movie. I'm going to try to direct my first movie, an action film. I try doing Dallas. And I put in the, the pieces together. I soon I finish the script. I start scout location. And I hope to shoot the movie this year and to direct my first movie. That's really cool. Uh, that's going to be good. I like challenges, and I think you will leave for challenge. And to have a chance to do that, for me, is going to be amazing. You know I mean? So do you think, obviously, jiu-jitsu has built the, the determination and the grit and getting in there and fighting and, and chasing after things. What else in your life has done that? I think... 
happiness is my focus. Uh, happiness for me, I think every human have a hole inside. And the key for me to, to feel that hole is family one. Really good friends, number two. Honest, integrity, and keep follow your dreams. Fig going after the things you love and try be more on the positive side, the negative side. That's what uh, I fight every day for, to, to feel the, ho the whole. Because I think the biggest challenge I have in my life is not, is myself. The moment I focus to this guy, Higa Machado, to be happy, everything's good. You know what I mean? And um, I'm so happy today for my life. E everything's bonus. You know what I mean? Everything comes after the Hollywood, the Jiu Jitsu, the so everything's bonus. It's fun. You know what I mean? But all the people I surround myself, it's people I love. People I really respect, the people who I like to spend time together. You know what I mean? And, and you've mentioned so many people that have poured into you, invested into you, the, the Gracies, your brothers, the, the whole family, Chuck Norris, all these great friends you have. Who, who else has been a part of investing in your story and helping you write your uh, book? Like, who would you want to thank right he, now? I uh, think in my career of jiu-jitsu, the first person... Was Carlos Grace, Helio Grace, it was a big influence. His kids, Carson, Hobson, everybody mm -hmm. have a little influence and communication to push me to to move forward. Like but after the main guy who put me in the next level, who I owe you them my my life in Jiu Jitsu, my growth in Jiu Jitsu was Carlos Grace Jr. Carlos Grace Jr. was my cousin and coach. And I come his first black belt. Uh, because when Hollis died, he started creating his independence to be Carlos Grace, the coach. And have a big split. A lot of the students going left uh, the academy, went to training for Hickson and I was based on one Carlos Focus because he Carlos wanna manufacture uh, his own products, his own fighters. And little by little with the success in competition, pretty soon he started building a, a manufacturer of uh, champions who helped to, to bring him as a success coach. And later he built a jiu-jitsu organization who comes to success. After this, he built a big organization, jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. And I think he's one of the a big ambassador of jiu-jitsu on the other side. On the, you have the MMA side, who was, I think Horton was one of the major pioneers, but on the sports side was Carlos Grace Jr., who who helped to push the sport to the next, the jiu-jitsu sport, the sports jiu-jitsu for the next level. Where where do you see jiu-jitsu going? So you you guys brought it here. You've seen how it got here and where it's going. Uh, how do you see it advancing right now? We were talking the, about some of these guys. Yeah, the way I see, you plant a seed. The seeds start to grow. Come to a point, now the, these seeds spread everywhere. Now it starts growing everywhere. It's like almost like... The sport create their own life. It's not up to me anymore. The hard part was in the beginning with myself, my brothers, and my cousins, Hoyce, Hicks, and Hoyle, the, the, the major pioneers. But today is easy because it's thousand events of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, sports Jiu-Jitsu and stuff. And uh, hundreds and hundreds of the MMA competition which to be a, a complete MMA fighter, you have to do jiu-jitsu. You keep, it's very hard to be a complete fighter without jiu-jitsu. You have to go to a jiu-jitsu school. And you have to learn about to defend yourself, how to attack, how to submit, 
You don't need to be the best jiu-jitsu guy, but you need to know. And these keep push jiu-jitsu to grow faster. That's why the Brazilian jiu-jitsu is the fastest growing martial arts in the world today. Because the speed they're going right now is unbelievable. It's like any part you go in the world today, you're going to find some, somebody teaching Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It's crazy. I went to Bali, a bunch of jiu-jitsu schools there. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's like you go to Brazil, every corner is Brazilian jiu-jitsu school. It's like it's like come like a, a major sport in not just Brazil but South America. Uh, boy, you see what happened in Abu Dhabi. The number of events, the number of uh, the investment they put in, in the, to the sport of jiu-jitsu is fantastic. The Abu Dhabi competition now in a big arena. Is, you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. It's amazing to see that. Do you think we'll see it in the Olympics soon? Yeah, for sure. You can't stop the growth. You know what I mean? Something's going to happen sooner or later. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's time for step to the next level. And that's got to be really cool for you to have been a part of that, of bringing that here and spreading that, and yeah, spread like spread like wildfire, and you can't stop. I that. think it's gonna happen. It's, you can't stop that. It's gonna happen sooner or later. You know what I mean? I think the the issue maybe because have uh, judo, we have things can create a look like the same. Um, but you never know. I, I believe jiu-jitsu is going to be a major sport for the Olympic Games in the future because in so many countries right now, it's the right time to bring jiu-jitsu for the Olympic Games now. And I think it's going to be good for Brazil because Brazil have so many champions. It's going to bring able to bring medals for Brazil. It's going to bring a new recognition for Brazil. Brazil is going to explode because... Brazil is not like America have thousands of medals or, or Brazil get like a good number of medals but not like United States uh, but with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu it's going to be amazing because it's going to bring some medals for Brazil it's going to help the sport grow even more you know what I mean it's gonna, I hope so I hope they they cross the line to be on the Olympic game one day so you've had this amazing life. You're you're a pioneer, a legend in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You're impacting the lives of children and actors and Hollywood, everybody all over the world. And when you came in here, and this is how we're going to wrap up the show, you grabbed your favorite color off the wall, and uh, you have a little statement that uh, you want to be known for, that you want to leave with the world when you leave the world. So what did you write down I wrote, on your card? I, I said, like, love jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu will love you back. Love it, brother. Because it's simple. Just do if you love. You know what I mean? Not just do for do it, but put your love behind. I guarantee you're going to have good results. Well, man, thank you for your thank story you. and your thank time you. and for coming out. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, buddy. A big shout out and thank you to one of our sponsors, M&D Painting and Roofing. M&D was actually founded by my wife, Emily, and I back in 2005. And for the last two decades, we've been here in northern Colorado of one of the leaders in residential and commercial repainting, as well as most recently installing residential roofs. So if you need to paint, re-roof, you got hit by a hailstorm, we can take care of whatever your home needs from top to bottom. You can find us on the web at mandepainting.com.